As many of you will know, I spend a lot of my time traveling to relatively exotic places, and this has obviously come to a grinding halt during lockdown. I have in the past admired the field studio work of Neil Benvey, and also as part of the Meet Your Neighbours project, that of Clay Bolton and Lily Kumpay. I am drawn to the high key photography, the simplicity of the images and the potential to demonstrate the beauty of local nature, including subjects which would not normally be considered photogenic. The basic concept is to photograph the subject against a white background using a flash gun for backlighting and a second flash gun to bring out texture. This approach makes it possible to bring out translucent qualities of the subject and the other advantage, as I will make, mention later, is how easy it becomes to make a composite in Photoshop without any need for cutting out. And of course, many of these images are not standalone, but do make for interesting elements in a composite. Here's a view of the basic setup. It may look complex, but it's actually very easy to set up. The background is a sheet of three millimeter translucent plastic with a light transmitting ratio of a rating of about 40%. The sort used for light boxes and easily purchased on the internet. This is attached via some readily purchased supports to a tripod and a flash gun is positioned behind. The second flash gun is placed at the front of the subject at an angle or raised over the subject. And in order to avoid the harsh and ugly light a feature of flash guns, a diffuser is used. The human assistant is not mandatory. This diffuser acts like a thin layer of high cloud. To achieve this, I'm using materials as advised by Neil in his ebook, such as Flyweight, Corelight, or Corex, all easily obtained on the internet. The distance of the subject from the background will vary. Lighter subjects need to be further away because if the subject is too close, then the light spills onto it and it will blend with the background. If it's too far away, the impact of translucency is lost. If photographing outdoors, then the subject should be left in situ. But if photographing indoors, they can be placed in a swivel umbrella adapter, such as those made by Monfrotto, and can either be clamped into place or held by a small piece of blue tack. The initial step is to get the exposure of the background light correct. With the flash gun set to manual, the power output then depends on the specific flash gun and its power, but I find I tend to need approximately half power. Without the front flash active, I take initial, initial exposure. It's absolutely essential to make sure the background is pure white, so turn the blinkies on on the camera. When the exposure is right, the subject is moved closer or further away from the background to avoid light spill and make sure there is translucency. Then turn off the backlight and position the front or side light and hold the diffuser in front of it in order to get the right texture and image. My settings are normally between a quarter and a half, but of course it's always possible to move the flash closer or further away from the subject to get the right exposure. Once everything is set up, it's just a matter of focusing and taking the photo. I have my camera set in manual mode with a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second, f16. And I adjust the ISO to get the best exposure, usually between 200 and 400. And I tend to use a 150mm lens. Once the images have been taken, I import them into Lightroom. Unfortunately, raw processors, such as in Lightroom in current versions, are too good at recovering highlights. When I took this image, all the blinkies on the back of my camera were flashing, but that's not what I'm seeing when I have my highlights warning clipped in this process. Let me show you what I mean by going down to calibration, and this is version 5, but if instead I look at version 2 and have to put on the clipping warning, you will see that that's exactly what it was like when I took the image. Now I still work in version five because I'm used to that. But what I do is I go back into the basic tab and having gone into basic, I look at the profiles and I choose a camera neutral. 
And once I've chosen camera neutral, I then take the white slider with my finger on the option key, I slide it along until the whole of that area is completely white. Now I've got the image as it was when I took it. Once I've done that, I'll make any basic adjustments to contrast, etc. And then there are a few specific things that I will do. First of all, I will look at the texture. And I'm only going to do this very quickly. It's not accurate just for demonstration, but I'll increase the texture um, just to bring out a little bit more detail there. I'll also look at the HSL, uh, picking out the uh, picker in um, color, in saturation rather, I will adjust the saturation of the image. And then the other global change I make is to uh, make some masking, ch uh, sharpening changes because of the problems of digital cameras. Having applied a mask, I'll then just uh, briefly and quickly demonstrate, just increase a little bit, just to get rid of some of that rather flat appearance that's inherent in a digital image. I'll check for dust spots. And once I've done that, I will then go to export. And I have set up for myself in export uh, a preset under Field Studio. I've chosen on this occasion to put them into the PPS Field Studio uh, folder on my desktop. I'm exporting them as 8-bit TIFFs um, at full resolution and they're going straight into that folder with nothing else being done. And then once we've done that, we're then going to be in a position to take them into Photoshop. Making a composition in Photoshop is both simple and a challenge. The technical aspect is simplicity itself. The hard work and the fun comes in artistically making a composite. I start create, by creating a blank page, 9,000 by 6,000 pixels, as this will allow me to make a large print if I want to. I then add images one by one using file, place embedded, and navigating to the folder I previously created. Then I bring that image into Photoshop and I'll move it into a position which I think might be somewhere that I'd like to have it. I go back and choose my second image, file, place embedded, and bring in that second image. Now immediately we see we have a problem in that they're foot merging one with the other. In order to get rid of the white background of the upper layers in making a composite, it's very simple. Just go to blend and use darker color as the blending mode. Anything in a higher level that is pure white gives way to anything beneath it that is not. Then I move that image to where I think I might like it to be. And then having placed that one there, just make sure I go back and I've also got, sorry, darker color set for the blending mode lower down for reasons which we'll see later. And finally, I'm just going to bring that third image that I showed before. And again, we've got the same problem. So let's go back into the blending mode and choose darker color. It's not artistic, but we're going to choose that and accept that as it is. Now it's possible to leave the image as it is and merely save it. The back white background helps to show the elements in the composite. Sometimes it can look a bit stark. And so having spent so much time making sure the background is pure white, it's time to change to another color. And this is absolutely easy. Many of you will know exactly what to do, but it's select color range. And I'm going to choose a fuzziness of zero because I really just want pure white. So having chosen pure white and pressed OK, I'm going to go back into select, modify, expand, because by choosing here one pixel, it gives a much cleaner result than zero. Making sure the background is selected because of course these layers are smart objects. Uh, go to edit, fill, color, and choose from the color picker or from within the color, whatever color you want. But I have chosen a specific color if I click on there, I've got the color that I want. And I think that gives a much uh, cleaner image. And that's all you need to do in Photoshop. The job's done.